curtain case by curtain. Um, like Eddie says, the law passes down the minutes of speed of 21.5 meters per second. And its time flight is 3.97. And as what the long chamber is. And then these bullet passes down with the launch of 35 degrees. And then what is the initial speed and what is the time of flight? What is the distance from beginning to end again? It's on the diagram. Look at the scale on the bottom. Oh, 35. 35, we call it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so in part A, it asks you to find theta. It asks you to find the angle at which the lob pass is thrown. So this is the pass that the quarterback wants to give his team time to get downfield or is just trying to get over defenders, maybe a uh, defensive lineman that's tall. So he'll throw a lob pass to get her over their head. Now, the concept here, oops, the concept here that we're trying to figure out is at what angle should he throw it in order to have these trajectory elements? 3.97 seconds in time, an initial velocity of 21.5 meters per second. I'm guessing that's an actual velocity that the quarterback would throw it. You could probably convert that to miles per hour to see how fast it is. Again, he's throwing a lob pass. It's not as much of a line drive pass in front of him. Um, if you looked at the figure, actually, I think you could figure out that the max height was around 19 meters based on the diagram. Uh, somebody was asking me this yesterday, that's why I remember. So if you looked at the diagram, I'm pretty sure this tops out around 19 or 20 meters. So you could have used that information to help you with this problem also, but you didn't need it, okay? Um, and if we're trying to figure out the actual angle here, we have to go ahead and look and think about where is the angle contained? Where is theta in our equations? Where does theta come up? Where do we see theta when we're doing math? When I start doing this, right, I'm going to do this in a moment, okay? And then you're going to start giving me fill in the blanks and all this stuff with y, vi, v bar x. Where does theta play a role? Where does theta play a role? Good. So v bar x equals what? What was that one? And then what's vi, y? How do you find those? Good. So you're missing vi, don't forget. So it's vi cosine theta and then vi sine theta. But that's exactly right. It's cosine and sine. So it's embedded in the velocities. So what's going to happen here is when you solve this problem, you really need to investigate your velocities. So let's start with that first. So we start with v bar x. That equals vi, which is 21.5, cos theta. And vi y equals 25 sine theta. Again, I'm putting theta here because I don't know what theta is right now. The goal is to find what theta, what the value of theta is, not what vi is. vi is given. So it's embedded in another variable. And this is a problem I've seen a lot of you having, is when it's in here, what do I do with it? Well, you still take this expression, 21.5 cosine theta, and you still plug it into the formula where you have v bar x. So the formula with v bar x is this. So what I've underlined there in yellow is going to go in place of v bar x now. 21.5 cos theta. That's going to go right there in place of v bar x. What goes in for x and t? You have those values. True? OK, and then solve for theta. How do you get rid of the 21.5 next to cosine theta? How do you get rid of this 21.5 here? What is it currently doing? It's currently what? Yeah, it's multiplying. So what do you do? Divide by 21.5. That'll get you cosine theta by itself. So if you'd like to, you could write it like this. That's how I divide by 21.5, right? By putting it in the denominator on the other side. So that's your expression for cosine theta. You're going to get a number from that, aren't you? Isn't this a number? It's a decimal, actually, it turns out. It actually must be a decimal less than 1. You'll find out this year why that is, actually. You might have actually learned about it in geometry, the basic, but you'll definitely find out this year. But this value has to be less than 1. How do you get rid of the cosine? How do you get theta by itself? What do you do to get theta by itself? It's a function on your calculator, or it's a command, you might remember. Cos negative 1. Yeah, cosine negative 1, or cosine inverse would be the way you'd say it. So it's a cosine inverse. You take the cosine inverse of both sides. So to do that, you say, OK, well, theta is simply cosine inverse of whatever that number turned out to be in that fraction. I could write the whole fraction in there and type it in my calculator just like this.
But I need to remember to put parentheses around my denominator here. All right, because if not, it's going to do 35 over 3.97, and then it's going to take that answer and multiply it by 21.5. You want it to do over the product of those two numbers, so you need another set of parentheses in your denominator there. So if you want to calculate the number ahead of time, that's fine, but that'll give you theta for part A. What does part B ask for? Because I think part B was one that I remember speaking with a couple of people about that it was very tricky, so something about it. What is it? It had to do with the lower trajectory, right? The second part of this? Um, what is the initial speed and the time of flight? Okay. So the second part is asking for initial speed and time of flight given the values of theta. Theta is now 25 in that example. Um, now, there's several ways to do this part. First, you're looking for initial speed, so that's vi. You're trying to figure out the time of flight, t you know that v bar x is still the same setup, but now you don't have vi. You don't have vi, this is unknown now. And this is known now, this is 25. So you're missing one variable right now, but then it turns out you're also missing time. So you need to go to the y direction and do multiple equations again. So in the x direction, here's what it would look like. We're gonna use this lower trajectory of 25. I'm just gonna start writing at the bottom here. All right, so in the x and in the y. In the x, I've got the following. v bar x equals, now we don't know vi, that's unknown. This problem says find the initial speed or the initial velocity, that's unknown. But we know now that it's a 25 degree angle, so we can write that piece out. Time is unknown, x is still known, that's 35 still. In the y direction, we've got vi y. vi is unknown again still, but the angle of 25 is now known, so I could write that. Time is still unknown. Y is known. What is Y? What is Y? Now, again, you could answer the question two ways. So I'll give you two opportunities here and explain your reasoning. There are two correct answers. What are we going to use for Y? I throw a pass, right? I throw it from about this level. Somebody catches it at around the same level. What's Y? Zero. Zero. You could just set y equal to zero to get the total time of flight and solve for t. That's what we're going to look for. You could have also had set y equal to whatever you saw on the graph as y max. Do you remember? Look at, look at the figure itself, please. In your actual notes, if you, look, if you have the figure copied there, you'll see that the figure has a y scale next to it. What is the max height of this lower projectile? Can you see it? Five? It's five meters. So you could have set y equal to five. That's one possibility also as the maximum height, and then the time you would use as a value would be half of the full time. Does that make sense? You would have to use t over 2 instead of t, because remember, the, when you get to max height, how much time has elapsed? Isn't it half of the full time in a problem that has symmetry? If it takes one second, it takes another second to get back down. If there's perfect symmetry, there is symmetry. It's a football pass. It's perfect symmetry. It leaves, and then it ends at the same, assuming it's caught at the same height, which it is in this case. So you could have used y equals 5, because 5 is the max height in this problem. And you can see that, because in the diagram there was a scale like this. And this was 5 right here. That was the height of 5 up at the top. So you could have set it equal to 5 and put t over 2 in the equation, and you would still be able to solve for t. But actually it's easier to set y equal to 0 probably in this case. Yeah, I would say it is. I mean, although you could use v equals, vf equals vi plus at, and because the final velocity at the top, what's the velocity at the top again in the y direction? It's zero. So I could have used vf equals vi plus at and set vf equal to zero in the beginning and then solve for time. That would give me half the time. So that's another way to do this problem. There's two ways, clearly, but let, let's take a look at the other way here. If I have y equals zero, it makes this problem a little bit easier for me. I'm going to get rid of this other piece. Hold on. So if I have that in this case, I could then say, all right, ay is equal to negative 9.81. And I can jump right into this equation here. And on this side, the same thing we usually use. So v bar x equals x over t. That'll give me vi cosine 25 equals x over t. In the y direction, I have 0 equals, remember, this is vi y t plus 1 half 
ay t squared. We're going to have, for vi y, it's this whole expression, vi sine 25. I've got to take this whole thing up here and place it in for vi, for vi y specifically. I don't know what t is still. Now, instead of putting plus 1 half, I keep doing this with you guys. I'm, I'm going to keep doing it on purpose. I'm just going to put minus 4.905 t squared. How many variables do you have? How many variables are unknown in general right now for this problem? How many unknowns are there? How many? Time and VI. There's two. So VI is missing and time. VI is missing and time. And aren't they missing in both equations? When this happens, this is the circumstance where you use the substitution method. So you would solve for one of the variables in this equation and plug it in over here into this equation. Okay, I'm demoing this, and again, there is another way to do this. I'm demoing this method because I want you to see substitution again. I want you to be able to understand that you can have two variables missing as long as the same two variables in both equations. As long as it's vi missing in both and time. Or as long as it's theta missing in both and time. It could work this way. So on the left here, I would personally, well, there's several ways to approach this, honestly. You could divide everything by t on this side first. Factor out a t, and it gets rid of one of your t's. And then you could solve for vi and plug it in. But the problem said determine vi, and then part c said determine time. So in reality, we need both of these variables, vi and time. So you choose which one you want to solve for. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Okay, so for the sake of being annoying on purpose, let's say, let's solve this one for vi, because in class we solved for t, I remember. We plugged in for t. So just to change things up a little bit, I'm going to solve this for vi, plug it in for vi right here. That gets rid of vi altogether. And then we'll solve for time. And that'll give us part c to the answer. And once we know time, we can plug time in back here and solve for vi to get part b of the answer. It doesn't matter the order in which you progress here is what I'm saying. You could solve for time or vi. So in this case, how do I get rid of cosine 25? Remember, I'm solving algebraically now. It's not numbers. How do I get rid of the cosine 25? Put it in the denominator. Remember, dividing by something means put it in the denominator on the other side. So I move the cosine 25 over like that. Then I take that expression in yellow and I place it in for vi right here, for vi. And this is the same thing we did. We did this once in class. We did this once the other day when we were doing one of these example problems. And now we're doing it again. Okay, so we're going to take this whole expression and move it over at this point. And as a result, this is going to become the following. Now this whole expression goes here, times sine 25 times t, minus 4.905 t squared. So the whole expression I'll put in yellow so you can see it. Now, what do you notice happens right away? Right off the bat, something happens to make this problem a lot easier on us. It makes it not even necessary to use the quadratic formula or graphing, actually. Something happens right now that makes this really nice and simple. Not subtract them out. What's the right word for it? Cancel them out, we'll say. So here's the idea. No, you're, you're right, though, Marilyn. That's very good. It's astute that you saw that here. Look. T and T, they drop off for sure. So we can cancel them, but they're vertically canceling. They're not subtracting, OK? So let's cancel this with this right here. Again, the reason I can do that is because there's multiplication going on here, isn't there? And then putting something in the denominator, well, this is really over 1. I know it's hard to see this, but that's over 1. So that's a numerator. That's a denominator. Those are multiplication. You have cross cancellation. That's allowed. So as a result, this equation becomes very simple to solve now because it only has t squared. And if you know your geometry, or if you, I don't know if actually you guys learned this one last year. You definitely learned it this year. I know that. But I wonder if you learned it in geometry. What's sine over cosine? Did anybody learn that in geometry? Sine divided by cosine? It turns out it's tangent. Believe it or not, the definition of tangent is sine over cosine, actually which is kind of odd to think about. I know, right? You're like, whoa, where did that come from? 
It's a true fact. You probably didn't go into it yet because you're going to learn it when you get to the trig part of this, this year in your Algebra 2 trig course. Okay, but sine over cosine is tangent. So you could replace this whole expression if you wanted to. You could replace this with tangent 25, but you don't need to. It's the same thing, right? It's a number still. It doesn't matter. So I'm not asking you to memorize that, but I'm just pointing it out that this is really 35 tangent 25. That circle part is replaceable by tangent 25. In the end, look what you have. Only t squared left. So go ahead and solve for t squared. Move one thing over to the other side. I'm going to move the 4.905 t squared over here as a positive. I'm going to evaluate this. What does this become? This number right here, what does this end up becoming? 35 sine 25 over cos 25. See what that turns out to be. And then divide it by 4.905. I'm just going to stop. Let's go on because I'm going to run out of time and there's no need for me to go through the algebra at this point. So again, divide by 4.905 into that number. Take the square root to get your time. That time is what you can then use in this expression. The number you get for time, you'll get time equals some value. Here's an answer. You can then take and plug it in right there in order to allow you to solve for VI. Okay, that'll give you VI in this problem. This is a really lengthy problem. It's one of the fewer problems in, I think, in all of the problems that, and even the examples, where you had two variables missing that you had to solve what are called simultaneous equations, meaning they're both missing two variables. If you're just missing one variable, it's a little bit easier to get through it. All right, for the sake of time, because it's a C day, I do want to stop that question. Let me continue to talk for a little while. We have about 10 minutes, so I want to make sure it's clear that what you can expect. Um, for multiple choice, you can definitely expect questions like the ones we've been talking about where we add on to the problem, where we say things like, you know, why is it that there's more vertical velocity than horizontal velocity? You know, having to do with the angle being more than 45. What is that optimal angle 45? Why is it actually 45? How does air resistance affect the flight of the trajectory of an object? You know, it diminishes in, in both the vertical and horizontal direction because air resistance is, a, is an opposing force. Um, I also want to, let me, let me point out a few things from the lab. So I've been grading your labs and I'm on like page three of them. So I want to point out several things. So if you want to, just jot down notes on these things and I'm going to point them out. I'll put them up on the board actually to make it easier. What was that? Lab three, right? No, I'm just going to open the regular one. It's fine. I was going to open the solution to show you, but I'll talk about the ones I want to show you. Um, extra stuff, um, multiple choice. Again, let me give you an idea. I'll give you an idea as far as how many you could expect. Tomorrow's an A day. It's your first A day. I think the last two tests have both been on B days. So that'll benefit you for sure. It'll be a little extra time. Um, I don't expect it to be much longer than the average test you've been having simply because we're only covering section 4.4 four on this test. Um, yeah, so a lot of figures for sure. You could expect figures. You could expect me to answer questions like, you know, describe the velocity of the object at point A, B, and C, and they might be at different points along the path. Does that make sense? A projectile is moving, it's being launched from some location. I need you to describe the velocity at several locations. Well, at the top, the, the y velocity is zero, but the x is constant still. At the beginning, the x is still constant. X is always the same, right? That's your overall answer for any of the x. X velocity is always the same, no problem. But the y velocity changes. Remember, it's positive and it's zero, and then the y velocity starts to become more and more negative as it falls. Symmetry. The nature of symmetry will definitely come up. If it takes three seconds to the top, yeah, it takes three to go out of the bottom. Okay. Letter. You say it's In a problem where an object is launched with no air resistance from ground level, landing on ground level, the assumption is it's symmetrical. 
only if there were air resistance that it couldn't be, or if you started at a different <coughs> height, like this. If you shoot an object up to a left, like a cliff, or like a ledge or something, and there were something down. As long as there's delta y, you can't assume, assume symmetrical. Um, yeah? You can assume for all problems there's no air resistance, unless I tell you where I say, what is the difference between a problem with air resistance and not? Then I'll see it is. Every other problem there's no air resistance. Okay? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, what do you know about gravity? Does gravity change as a function of height? Does gravity change as a function of height? I've seen a lot of people shake no. Why not? Why does gravity change? What is it? It's a what? It's constant. It's a very constant. Okay. Again, the overall gravitational pull we're going to see later in the year when we get the forces will change very, 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 very well, insignificantly from even a level of this to like a higher level. Uh, but we're going to assume we're always at sea level. I'm not going to ask any questions where, you know, as the object is close to the top of this path, what's happening? Gravity's pulling down with negative 9.81 at all times. Um, What else? What other questions do you have based on your studies, based on the problem set? Because a lot of the stuff I'm looking at, we've talked about already, all this stuff. Oh, how about horizontally fired projectiles? What's the key we want to remember for those? There's a key to remember. You don't have this like that, you should write it down right away. There's one key to remember for horizontally fired. Huh? Yeah, zero. DIY is zero. The I Y is zero. The idea is that, again, I can demo it, you can see it yourself. Take an object and roll it off the table. It's moving to the right or left only when it leaves the table. It then begins to move down. It's not moving down. It's like as if I'm dropping it. When I let go of an object, is it moving down to start? No, it's stationary. And then it starts to fall. When I roll it to the right, it's moving this way, and then it starts to fall. It's the same exact problem. Free fall or rolling horizontally. V I Y equals zero. V I Y equals zero. If I tell you it's fired horizontally with a velocity of 10 meters per second, 10 meters per second is what variable? Yes, V bar X. Remember, it's all horizontal. There's no angle involved for the horizontally fired projectile. If you want to use an angle, it's fine. Just use zero degrees and it will work. You'll get your answer for the X, and it'll just be 10. And if you do 10 sine 0, you'll get 0 for the y actually turns out. So you could use 0 as your angle, just use angles, and it'll be the right answers. If a horizontally fire means all vx, the i y is 0. Why do you sometimes get two times, two positive times, as an answer? Why do you sometimes get two positive times? Exactly right. On the way up, you can reach a certain height. Say you're looking for the time to get to a height of seven meters. On the way up, it reaches two, three, four, five, six, seven meters. Well, it keeps going to its max, and then it's seven meters again on the way down. So the smaller time is on the way up always, right? And the larger time is always on the way down. These will come up in your math problems. You expect that. By the way, I edited the the, the eight problems I sent out to you, I made a new problem eight. So if you want to practice that tonight, you can't remember problem eight, I told you to disregard it when you looked at. So you can look at that example. I also added some parts to other problems. Like the field goal post one, I added a part to it um, And I think I added one more piece. So just look for differences. There's like three problems I've changed. I reposted it on the documents and handouts. Um, format, same. Okay, expect multiple choice, short answer, and back. Mathematically, you've got to know your formulas. You can't be like sitting there all day looking at your formulas and trying to figure out. You should have them almost memorized at this point. Like V bar equals X over T should be in your X direction before you even start the problem. Like literally, to start every problem, if you want to write this down for part twos, if, we're, if it's projectile motion, which this, this test, it will be, you can literally start every problem like this. You can start with this, always. You could always start with this. In the y direction, usually, you can start with this. And in the x, you can start with the other one. OK, with cosine. This is pretty much how you can start every problem on the test for math. Except when it's fired horizontally, 
this becomes your overall velocity, this becomes zero up here. Okay, keep that in mind again. All right, so fired horizontally, this is the overall velocity, whatever the velocity is you just put in here, and this becomes zero. This becomes whatever VI is in that case. It's tough to see the red. Okay, you look at it later. If you have questions, please come after school. I'm not going to hold up sound tomorrow morning. So if you have questions, you're coming after school today. Please email me if you get extended time. I need a period for tomorrow. Try and make it back to back with your test period if possible. Jack, you email me.